Hello. Good evening. We are live. Mostly. And we are uh, trying a new camera tonight for our live stream. And so... Tonight, Bible study. And uh, we're going to get started with... Um, Cheryl. Yes, what? Praying for us. Oh, okay. Father, we praise you and glorify you. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come here to this church and to learn more about you. Father, we just ask that you open our minds, open the eyes of our hearts for us to learn and retain. And Father, we just leave this meeting in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So the first thing I will tell you is, uh, we start talking about getting close to God and things start going south. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you know, play games and not worry about it, just kind of live Come see, come saw, who cares? Okay, sarah, sarah. But when you start talking about doing things, and gets gets to work. So guess what we're going to talk about tonight? <laughs> so last last week we talked about those scary scriptures. Depart from me. I do not know you. I never had true communion with you. So tonight we're going to start talking about how we can work on our intimacy with God. How we can work on our closeness to God. How we can work on our Okay, everybody ready tonight? All right. So, if I could have somebody turn. That's at the very last of the Bible. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Elja. Okay, so if I remember correctly, this is the church at Ephesus. And the interesting thing is that earlier in the Bible, the church at Ephesus is actually um, complimented about how much love they have. So somewhere along the line, something went awry. is much like our relationship with our marital partner or our friends or our family members. If we let the flame die, then it's going to go out. Whether you've been friends with somebody for one year, 100 years, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you rekindle and continue to rekindle that flame of love and relationship with your marital partner, your friends and family. It is the same way with God. 
It is the same way with God. So the first step is commitment and faithfulness. Commitment and faithfulness. I'm committed to God today. And guess what I got to do tomorrow? I got to recommit. And Sunday and Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. The same praise and worship fervor that I may have had last Sunday will not contain and hold me to next church service. I have to reignite the same passion, praise and worship, <coughs> excuse me, every Sunday. Um, let me say this. It is not, <coughs> excuse me, it is not Daryl's job to pump you up. Neither it is my job to pump you up. I'm not here to pump you up. That's not my job. It's not my calling. That's not Daryl's job or calling. Daryl's job. Through it. It's up to me to relate to you the oracles of God. It's up to you to obey it. I cannot have your relationship with God for you and vice versa. You must make the commitment. And, you know, we just <laughs> talked about this Sunday. Let me just let me just elaborate a little bit further of what I said this past Sunday. I can guarantee you that because of my condition, my circumstances and my conditions, and because I felt that my circumstance was directly related to my relationship with God, my that this is not worth it. This is not worth it. But guess what? Guess what I had to do? Suck it, up. Suck it up, buttercup, and stay committed and stay faithful. Commitment and faithful. If you're committed and faithful to God in the good times, good for you. But if you're not committed to God and, uh, and faithful to God in the bad times, what's the use? What's the use? And maybe, don't, don't, don't let me go to preaching. Maybe. If we stay committed to God and faithful to God in good times and bad times, maybe we'll have a lot less bad times, a lot better good times. Good. I don't know. As, uh, as, as one lady said, and I can't remember her name, and I apologize for not being able to um, relay to you that information, but she said it best. Adversity does not build character. Adversity reveals it. And that's true, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Hello. I love what the McCainies sing. The God on the mountain is still God in the valley. <laughs> Commitment and Faithfulness. These are uh, keys to intimacy with God, and this is by Kevin Bart, B-A-R-T. So I'm using his material. I'm giving him credit for it. Good stuff. All right, number two. As Redbone sang, cultivate your love. <laughs> what Jenna taught and what we all should be doing. Love, cultivating our love for God and for one another. Somebody read Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verse 5. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. So let's do what? Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Now how many of you know that that goal and commandment is very difficult to achieve, if at all possible? But guess what? Guess what that guess what Deuteronomy chapter six still a command. Yeah. What's the use if I ain't gonna get there? Because if you continue to work for it, you're going to grow Is anybody listening? How about Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13? Somebody. Somebody. Gospel of John, 15, verse 13. No one has greater love. No one has strong, stronger affection than to lay down or give up his own life for his friends. Oh, my. Okay. It's in Matthew chapter 22. And I'm just going to summarize it. Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 40. Jesus is tempted and asked by one of the smart lawyer types, what's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love Everything's together on those two commandments. Because if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you will love your neighbor as yourself. It's as simple as that. But how do we know that we have love for God, for others? Somebody turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. 2 Corinthians Five verse. Okay, so let me read it in another way. Second Corinthians five nine. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. Let me ask you, let me put it to you this way. How do I know if you love God? It's simple. Is it your goal to please God? Or is it your goal in life to make excuses why you can't? Say, okay, well, Pastor Dan, how do we please God? I'm glad you asked. Because we will go right to the next one that says, keep is love for God. So we have love, not just love, but now we have love specifically for God. Read it to you. You can write it down if you want. First John, not gospel of, but first John chapter five, verse three. 
It, this is our love for God to keep his commandments. And his commands are not burdensome. It's just too hard. No. Yeah. How come you're doing this to me, God? Uh, because, okay. So you don't want to serve God, then things get hard, and you ask, or you're ask, you asking God, why are things so difficult for me? It's because God loves you, and your eternity is the most important thing to God. And if he has to bounce you off the pavement three or four times to get your attention so that you get your act together, then he's willing to do it. I don't like it. Well, then obey God. Do what God wants you to do. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my, you'll keep my commandments. That's in the Gospel of John. It's it's not it's it, it's 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 not rocket surgery. It's rocket science and brain surgery all in one. It's 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 really not. We we try to make this so complicated. Oh, I don't know if I can keep all the commands. Trust me, if you start loving. not breaking as many commandments as you used to because you're spending more time obeying and loving than you are disobeying and not loving and all of a sudden things are starting to fall in place as they should no no there's still going to be difficult times Look, I, I, I mean, all you have to do is look through the Bible and you will see Jesus himself. Things went south and sideways occasionally, if not often. And what did they do? They reverted back to key number one. Anybody? Commitment and faithfulness. No matter the circumstances. Yeah. Y'all kind of quiet. You're either tired or you're not at all happy. Or maybe you're just attentive. Come to me Sunday, man, you preached right at me. No, I didn't. I preached right at me. You're collateral damage. <laughs> it's the same thing happening tonight. You don't, if you don't like this, get over it because you're just collateral damage. I'm, I'm teaching myself here tonight because it's easy. And particularly in today's world, mm -hmm. I got things to do. I don't like the way things are going in my life. I'll get with you later, God. It's easy. The difficult thing is key number one. Which is commitment and faithfulness. How do I commit and be faithful? Start on day one, repeat on day two, <laughs> wash, rinse, repeat. I just can't do it. No, no.
Man, let me tell you something. Man, you're already in a routine. You don't need a routine. You need to change your routine. All of you got routines. All you got to do is start putting God in there. Move some things around. Yep. And faithfulness. That was key number one. <laughs> key number one. All right, let's go to key number three. Where did that? That was in two. And key number three is R E S P E C T. Smash that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Respect and reverence. Remember, and it's called. The Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. it's actually the disciples' prayer. Mm -hmm. It's better to be called the Our Father Prayer. Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven. What's the next part? Hallowed. Yeah. Holy is thy name. Respect for who and what God is. Because of what they see through us, absolutely. So if you if you ever get into a discussion, a written discussion, okay, and I've 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 talked with people online that are devout Jewish people in Judaism, they will not type the name of God. They will type G slash D because it is blasphemy and disrespect to even utter the name of God. Respect and reverence. So let's let's talk about respect and reverence, okay? And, and we talked about this actually last night, a little bit of real men of Jesus, and that is in a church service, is to be done decently and in order. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I will tell you one of the hardest things that my dad taught, and I don't mean hardest as in different. Church is when you enter into the house of God, you respect the God of the house. When you enter the house of God, you should start respecting the God of the house. And so, you know, one of the ways we do that is the ebb and flow of the spirit. Now listen to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce some heads around here for a few minutes. The ebb and flow of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the spirit is being loud. And that's shown into the, uh, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is being quiet. So listen, if you're loud, and I don't mean, I don't mean 
um, how do I say this? I don't mean vo verbal. I don't mean not being verbal. Okay. But when there is a, what they call a holy hush. Okay. You respect that. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. It's, it's, when, when the Holy Spirit brings it to a quiet. Okay, the Holy Spirit's up to something. That's not time uh, for your cell phone to be going off. It's not time for you to be talking to your neighbor. It's time to pay attention because God's up to something. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to. Doesn't mean you have to go completely quiet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So being loud during the quiet time. Is being but on the other side, sitting like a bump on the log, it's the same disrespect. Because you, sir or madam, are refusing to respect God and his Holy Spirit presence and what that Holy Spirit presence, what he is wanting to do. You're not helping. And if you're not helping, now look, if everybody's dancing and you can't dance, a boisterous, joyous uproar in the kingdom of God in church service, and you are sitting with your mouth shut and not making a peep, you are out of order and, out, and not respecting God just as much as the person that's loud when we're supposed to be quiet. This is not my personality. Don't give me that. I've been around almost all of you. I know you can get loud. Listen. You're at home. And they announce, I know this is a <coughs> bad analogy, but I'm going to give it anyway. Don't get, don't, don't, don't throw a hissy fit over this. You're sitting in front of the TV. for three billion dollars and you hit every number oh my goodness don't tell me you're going to sit there quietly <laughs> you may pass out <laughs> but you're not going to sit there quietly well i'm thankful that i won oh my gosh they're not going to do that why why do we show such boisterous joyous occasion for sports teams and Anything else, but when it the respect, and I'm like, let me let me just let me just take this all the way to the mat, so to speak. And I I, I don't mean to be a a jerk, but it irks me to be at a sporting, at in person, at a sporting event. <coughs> Would everyone please rise as we sing the national anthem? And three or four yahoos are over here just sitting there ch chatting with each other. That's just, that's disrespectful to me. Yes. Uh, please, re, you know, uh, please, That's disrespectful. Let me tell you a true story. Jake was probably six or seven, and we went to the tomb of the unknown soldier. 
Washington, D.C. And I said, guys, this is holy ground. This is sacred. And we are not going to make a sound. Yes, sir. Okay, Dad. So they are changing the guard. And Jacob gets stung by a wasp or a bee. Something stung him. Uh, he cried and he whimpered, but he was not going to make a noise because he had respect for the reverence of the place, the meaning, and the time. Can I get an amen? Look, I get it. Yes, be friendly. Be, you know, come in and fellowship. But good grief, you know, when that, when that counter gets to zero, we would actually like to start. Talking. <laughs> uh, then get here earlier so you can talk with everybody before the counter gets to zero. Hello. Okay, and when, and when we're praying for somebody. God wanting to do something. You know, when Daryl said, hey, we're skipping three songs, three or four songs, we're going to the last song. Respect that. There's some, the Holy Spirit's up to something and I need to, I need to zero in on what the Holy Spirit is doing and not be out here in La La Land. I, you know, I don't know if it's pride and I don't know if it's outright, I'm, not, I'm gonna show disrespect. I don't think it's that. I just think it's the lack of discernment mm -hmm. for what is going on and what God is up to. Yeah. I don't think they just they just don't and Paul's yeah. just not kind of Yeah, just not and I'm not I, I'm not getting anything out of service. <laughs> what are you putting off. what are you putting into it? Well those are the nature of God. Yeah. Coming to this church with the spirit Yeah. What are you putting into what is, let me let me let me rephrase this. Okay? So let's talk about respect. What are you coming to? Well, and, and so, so let me preach to you for a minute. Some of it, and I talked about this last night too, is we're spoiled. And I don't, I, I don't mean that arrogantly, but we're spoiled. I can, I can take you to a lot of churches that do not have the anointing like we do here, do not have the presence of God. Anointed and playing anointed like we do here. We don't. This, that's just not everywhere. And you know, and I've preached this before, and I'll I'll, I'll preach it again. Uza mm -hmm. reached out. Ian, yeah, listen. If I preach the same sermon ten Sundays in a row, I guarantee you it's going to be new every Sunday. If I pre if. I preach under the anointing of God. Yes. Belgium. And what I'm really think is really something is if we reflect whatever has been preached and whatever God has given us, if we reflect outside of the church and what God has given us, the anointing to reflect. Because my housekeeper, when she came to my house, and I asked her, please respect 
Yeah. And that was all because I started asking her to respect my house, no cussing. And he, she seen me with my Bible a lot and seen me with everything that I do in my home. And now she has respect. Right. So, so for those, so for those who who say, I. Receiving. What are you receiving? Because, okay, so hearing is one thing, but are you receiving? Listen. Right now, at my house, my dish satellite is receiving a dish signal. It receives a dish signal 24-7. But we, can, we only consume it when we turn the receiver on inside. Uh, that went right by you. Okay. Gun, 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 saying nothing to me. Oh, God's speaking 24 7. You got to have your personal receiver turn on and actually sit down and listen. That, that's called respect. All right, let's move on to the next one. Proverbs. Chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Somebody. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart and you not from your own understanding and all your ways of knowledge and he will make it straight your path. Faithfulness, key number four is trust and faith in God. Trust and faith in God. God's been hammering me, and he's still having to hammer me. But yes, trust and faith in God. So how do, you have, how, how, how do we know we have trust and faith in God? Well, let me ask you a simple question. Do you believe what, the God, what God's word says about you? Well, yeah, it says I'm a miserable wretch. That's, no, that's not what it says. Nice try. That's not what it says. Yep. Trust and faith in God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. I will trust. How, how do you get to trust someone? I don't mean know about him. I mean know him. But it's experience. I feel like Connor. He was terrified to go to middle school. I mean, this is a preacher. I didn't know I was going to go to the And I kept telling him, God's going to go with you. He will help you. He promises that he will help you. For 
first day. There you go. Yep. And and how do you do that? You step out. You may li listen. Check this out. You may trust him a little bit, but if you step out in faith. Uh, before uh, so dad mom and I think us boys I don't remember it I may have uh, been too young to remember but uh, he was in um, A.J. Rowden's church up in Kansas City and the Lord spoke to him I want you to prophesy whoa do what I want you to prophesy. I want you to speak the word of the Lord. Okay. As soon as I get this song over with, I'll prophesy. Song gets over with. Okay. Um, as soon as this song's over with. This song's over with. Nothing. So they go into praise and worship. It says, God, as soon as they come to a lull, a quiet place, I'll prophesy. Nothing. Quiet place came. Nothing. Rise back up. As soon as they come to the next quiet place, I'll prophesy. Nothing. Praise and worship service ends. Everybody's seated. And they're going through the transition. And dad stands up. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord God. <laughs> word. He didn't even know as another single word in the English language. It went completely blank. And he said, I'll never do that again. And Brother A.J. Rowden stepped up and said, folks, you just heard a real message of God if you listen. And guess what? The real... <laughs> ...became one of the most prolific prophets that I've ever known. But he had to do it one time first by stepping out in faith, trusting God first. <laughs> you got to do it first. You got to do it first. And believe me, it's still scary today, but you got to just keep doing it. It may be scary to you, but you trust and have faith in God. And not of your own ability, not of your own person. The Lord testifying, do a run in grief share, run and celebrate recovery. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Preaching. <laughs> you know, I, I've shared this story before. I'll say it, share it again. I used to umpire a ton of baseball. I mean, a ton. Upper level high school, upper level legion. Well, how do I get experience? And I looked at him, I said, the only way you can get experience is by getting experience. 
You're not going to get experience watching baseball. You got to get up on the field and do it. If you want to obey God, you got to start by obeying God. It's that simple. All right, one more. Otomas. Five. Everybody ready? Listen. Listen. And I'm I'm gonna read these scriptures, okay? You can just mark down the location. John, excuse me. Gospel of John, chapter 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. My sheep hear and listen and know my voice. Verse. Just read John chapter 10. It's all throughout that chapter. I know them. They know me. And they follow me. I know them, they know me, and they follow me because they know my voice, because they listen. And if you're ever around sheep, I mean a lot of sheep, you hear a lot of meh, ah, but when the shepherd speaks, all of a sudden, they snap to attention because the shepherd is saying, come here, we're moving to this pasture. The sheep hear, they know, they listen, they follow. Are you listening to what God is saying? When, anyway, good question, how do you listen? You can listen through praise and worship songs. You can listen to songs on the radio. Mm -hmm. You can listen by reading your Bible. You can listen by listening to your Bible. You can listen by attending or watching Bible study. You can listen by attending or watching. God is speaking 24 seven. All you have to do is shut everything out and listen and he'll speak. Hmm. Well, how do you know it's God? God's love for you, about what God wants to do for you, with you, through you, by you, and that's probably God. If it's finding excuses why not to, that's probably not God. Could be the devil. Most likely it's just you. My biggest problem has been, now listen, Satan has been a problem. But the most consistent problem is me. Shut up, Dan. For all those tricks that he's played on me? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. He is a sly fox. That is true. Um, it would help if we would quit to be the trick is we oh he's talking I want to listen run that by me again oh he's talking I want to listen First Samuel chapter 3 
and verse 10. And folks, it would be nice if we could get to this point. For Samuel 3.10. Samuel is in his tent sleeping. And the Lord came and stood there by his tent. And said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel woke up and said, Lord, I'm sleeping now. And rolled over and went back to sleep. No, I'm sorry. That's not what the Bible says. It says, um, Samuel said, speak. For your servant is listening. See, the issue has now... have made it an issue that's not the issue the issue is whether or not you are listening receiving and putting what God has spoken to use it's that simple and I know that's harsh I know that's hard I know that's mean but that's just the way it is God speaking. Are we tuned in to the right channel and are we listening? <sighs> yes. Yeah. Well, oh, I get that. Um, but remember what the psalmist says. Thy words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Why? How, do, how does that work? Meditate. Medi meditate, listen, memorize, and meditate. Psalms. Okay? Psalms. And so... Okay, you may not be able to verbally speak that out loud. Okay, if you're if you're in the doctor's office and it's crowded and you are sitting there waiting for your name to be called to go back and you just our father which are in heaven, how it be that <laughs> people are going to get worried something is going to happen. <laughs> okay, but it's okay to say. <clears throat> I just did. Be because, see, here's now, here's the deal. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. Your brain cannot think two things at the same time. <laughs> it can't think. It, it, I'm telling you, it cannot think two things at the same time. Your your brain is not a multitasker. It's not. It just goes from one thing to another. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? So if, if you... Watch this. Now that now watch the 
anything else? Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you guys honest truth. Okay? I have been preaching. Well, I'm still preaching. The words are the, the words are still coming out of my mouth. Okay? Let me ask you this. Let me just ask you this. Have you ever been driving down a road, start thinking something and say, how did I get here? I don't remember the last, I don't remember the last, I don't remember the last 10 miles. Okay. Those are automatic responses, but your brain's still only, only thinking one thing. It, it may, now listen, it may be operating subconsciously. So, so if, so if you are quoting the Bible, Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And you're thinking about what you're saying, your brain can't go to the next place unless you will allow it. <laughs> Christy. I was going to say also when listening, when listening to others, also make sure that this is not wondering and you're in tune with that person, mm -hmm. even though it's hard it, it is, is hard. Sometimes you've got to check yourself. Yep. Do I, what did you say now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I am so guilty of that. And my wife is going, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I am. I am. She has been sitting at the table with me while I'm going, and she says, "What are you talking about? <laughs> never mind, never mind." She says, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm just having a conversation with somebody." <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yes, I am weird, and I admit it, but I'm not going off the deep end. Okay. So. It is Wednesday night. We are coming to a close. I'm going to give you one word of encouragement. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Work on key number one. Commitment and faithfulness. Just start with there. It's just, I don't know where to start. I just gave you a starting place. Commitment and faithfulness. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Help us to be, God, closer to you in our relationship and help us to start off with just commitment and faithfulness. And we give you the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said. Praise God. Amen. Amen.
All right, folks. We're...